Good afternoon, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. It is the afternoon. Oh my goodness, y'all. There's so much going on. And so my mornings have been really full as God is transitioning us into a new season. That's what I'm going to get into today. And oh my goodness, if you've not seen my Facebook post from this morning, y'all, I cannot tell you how deep it is that the Lord's revealing Isaiah 58 to me. If you have opportunity and are led by the Lord, I encourage you to read Isaiah 58. I specifically love the Amplified Classic, which is the Amplified Bible before 2015. So today is about the newness of God factor. The newness of God factor. Hey, Helene, God bless you. And I'm going to get into that. And again, I'm going to be pulling from different things that are going on, transition that's taking place, God moving us into new direction. Oh my goodness. Hey, Tanya, God bless. Thank you for joining in. That's what today is about. And I thank God for this time because I feel his presence and I pray that you feel his presence as well. And oh my how much do we need the presence of God each and every day, all day long, but especially in the times of trials to know that he is our present help. Amen. And so today, as you're going through transitions, going in a new direction today, I'm going to bring in the new growth, the newness of God factor, the newness of God factor and I'm going to do an analogy on nerve growth factor, NGF, which takes place in relation to neurons producing it. And also when a baby is being formed in the womb and its brain is being formed and it's growing and developing, nerve growth factor helps to develop axons as well as synaptic connections and many other things that are taking place in the brain. And so I'm going to be bringing in some things that are going to absolutely bless you and astound you as Holy Spirit strengthens you and encourages you to know that God is with you. He will never forsake you. He is there with you in your transition. In Jesus name. Amen. And so I'm going to bring in some of the things that are going on. Now, those that have been on my Facebook, as well as my YouTube channel, and on my live videos, as well as my post, you've seen where God has had me continually leading up to the 18th last week, last Thursday, saying that there was going to be swift change. Change was coming swiftly. Change was coming swiftly on the 18th. Love you, Matt. And on top of change coming swiftly, oh my goodness, the day that he had me prophesy that, which was actually a week before, a week before the Thursday before the 18th on the 11th, God had me prophesying that change was coming swiftly on the 18th, okay? And then as soon as I prophesied that and I left to come get rich, I see a personalized tag, tag, which are my God winks for S-W-I-F-T, for Swift. And oh my goodness, chapter four of the new book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease, is the fourth dimension, the kingdom of heaven, and it is beyond phenomenal. Hey, Monica, God bless. Hey, Katie, God bless. And so I'm going to bring into some things that are going on this transition of the swift change and it kind of hits you out of nowhere. You don't know how it's going to look like and it's just upon you and is staring you in the face and you don't know what to do with it. And you're like, God, or what? Today is this video for you. And this is going to be one you want to come back to. It's going to be one you want to send loved ones and friends and ministers Anybody that is going through swift change and they're kind of like a deer in the headlights and they don't know what to do today, this video is going to be beyond a blessing. Are you ready? 
And so the main emphasis I want to get at today is Isaiah 58, the true fast. Saints, there's so many distractions of the present age. There's so many things that we've attached our soul to and we need to withdraw. You know, Jesus, the very Son of God, withdrew himself from spaces and he got alone. And we don't see that a lot nowadays. We're so busy being tied in, busy, busy, busy. Even when we're not busy, we're busy just trying to fill our space with social media or with other things, with information, with going to conferences. And you know what? You don't get in this space of stillness and waiting on God. Instead, you're waiting on what's going to come out and you're going to try to grab a hold of it. But you've got to wait on God. Amen. Hey, Lisa and Kimberly, God bless y'all. And so the emphasis I want to bring in today is Isaiah 58. Y'all, three weeks ago, God told me to do an Isaiah 58 fast specifically for Matthew, my youngest son. And so there was some, what I thought was breakthrough. It was the beginning, a token, okay? And then, thank God, last week, last week, God told me last Sunday, not this past Sunday, not yesterday, the week before, he said, Robin, it is urgent for you to do a fast, Isaiah 58, this week. And I did not know what was going to happen. We had just seen Carter Conlon's message that was put out two days earlier. On the 11th, mind you, or on, on the 12th, mind you, After the prophecy said change was coming swiftly, so the 12th, Carter Collin puts a message out. We watch it as our church. He's up in New York. He's up in New York. There are three guys from Alabama. I live in Alabama, Birmingham. Three guys from Alabama at a rehab center. And so there's transitions, changes that are happening in our life. And I needed that message. It encouraged me for my youngest son. And so after that, God said, Robin, I want you to do another Isaiah 58 fast. And so I started doing the Isaiah 58 fast. In the meantime, our light switch went out in the dining room. They had to put a new light switch in. They turned the power off. And so on is down and off is up. Backwards. It's not what we think. It's not how we think. God is resetting your mind, a new mindset, because there's so many attachments that you know not of, of the thinking of this world that have grabbed a hold of your heart and are influencing you, okay? I mean, there's just so much God's going to put into this video. I don't know if I have enough time to do it before Rich comes out, but we'll see how much time I've got, and I can only do it right now while I'm here getting rich or while I'm away from the house. Because thanks be to God, Matthew's at our house, and that itself is a miracle. And so, as God kept saying, change was coming swiftly leading up to the 18th. Little did I know how that change would look like. And I woke up on the 18th having a normal day. So I thought. And then all of a sudden, phone calls started coming in about 7 a.m.-ish in the morning, 7.30-ish, something like that. And it was... I just can't even tell you, and I can't get into it because I'll break down crying. And the fact that I'm even functioning, and the fact that I'm even on this video, all I can tell you is G-O-D. There's only been maybe a couple times that I've really just broken down and sobbed since last Thursday because there's been a major crisis that nearly took my youngest son's life, and I'll let him give that testimony Because he should not be alive today. And angels had to be surrounding him. Because I'm, and the policemen were blown away that he was alive. They could not believe it. They said, no, he he shouldn't be alive. That couldn't happen. Y'all, when you find out, my youngest son, what happened to him and how his life could have ended last Thursday morning. Early, early in the morning, like 3 a.m., and God woke me, and I'd been fasting that week on top of the light switch, going out, getting a new light switch by the landlord, on is down, up is off, 
On top of that, when they turn the power off to put in the light switch, the stove oven stops working. And it took two days to figure it out because they swapped out the cord. They put a new cord on the oven. Then they sent an electrician. And the electrician found out that the breaker downstairs, five flights down, did not work. And it was affecting a leg that was for the outlet. Now, let me tell you what. Oh, my goodness, how much God has given me about interpretation of Isaiah 40, 31, those that wait on the Lord, he shall renew your strength. You shall run, have legs, and not be weary. And you shall run and not be weary. You shall walk and not faint. And I'm telling you, it's about the power of God. And the power of God comes when Isaiah 58 is your life. Isaiah 58 is your life. What do I mean? It means the kingdom of heaven is in you. That your heart is the heart of the Father. And today is about newness of God factor. The newness of God factor. And some of y'all need a new anointing. Psalm 92, 10. A fresh anointing. And instead, it's a stale anointing. It's lost its power. It's sufficiency in sustaining you because you're distracted by the world. And there's a need to fast and pray. And I thank God for telling me to fast and pray. And because the oven and the stove were broken for three days and I was already fasting and praying, that just made it easier because I couldn't eat, you know, during the day. But had I not, you know, it really, I shudder to think where my son would be right now. And thanks be to God. And so much has happened over the weekend. Y'all, this has been ongoing. This has not stopped yet, but God is transitioning us. When swift change comes, you can be like a deer in the headlights. And there's so much still to be done. Leg work. And remember, when our stove went out, our electricity was affected by the switch being. God's flipped a switch. Isn't that crazy? A switch has flipped. Y'all, I kid you not. Mark it in your calendars. Things have switched since last Thursday. Things are happening. And all I can tell you is this video is something you're going to want to want to keep in your library and come back to. And so today is about the newness of God factor and it's about the power of the legwork. And that is Isaiah 40, 31. Those that wait on the Lord, he shall renew your strength. You shall mount up like eagles, wings going to the sun. You shall run, legwork, and not be weary. You shall grow. You shall walk and not faint. Because there is a lot of legwork, okay? There's a lot of legwork when change comes swiftly. And it can overwhelm you. And it can really... Make you like a deer in the headlights, like, what? And God help me. Okay. This video is going to be one you want to come back to. And so I'm going to bring in the newness of God factor. And so first and foremost, I want to point you after this video to read Isaiah 58. I really encourage you to read the Amplified Classic. If you don't have a Bible, an Amplified before 2015, which is the Amplified Classic, go to Bible Gateway. Get the Amplified Classic Translation of Isaiah 58. And so Isaiah 58 is having the heart of the Father. His heart, which is of the kingdom of heaven, the mind of Christ, where the Holy Spirit brings the potency of God's sufficiency, His grace, His love. And love is the power source, 1 Corinthians 13, to do the Father's works. And in this change coming swiftly, God is bringing you into that which he's always purposed, which we see with Joseph, which we see with David after many years when you just stop thinking about it. You just put it on the back burner. It just even might have gone out of your mind. Who knows? But now, because of this swift change, the Father is bringing us to such humility where own is down, how low can you go? God exalts the humble. He lifts the humble up. And so the way that the light comes on, 
like my light switch being changed and they did it backwards where the light comes on when you when it flips down and it turns off when you flip it up and so prod exalted exalting self the light's not going to come on and that life is john 1 4 which is my personalized tag john 1 4 in him was life in jesus was life and that life is the light of men and so the way that we get our light on of that life of Jesus, of that power source, in order to do the legwork necessary, the details, the work that's necessary for this swift change that's here, that work has to be done. God is giving grace and sufficiency. I'm going to talk about the God, the newness of God factor, the newness of God factor. I'm going to hurry up because Rich is about to come out in 15 minutes. And so the newness of God factor. And so, first and foremost, read Isaiah 58. Get it in your heart. Fast and pray. Talk to a doctor. Make sure you're doing it to where it's not going to put you in jeopardy. Do a fast that's sufficient, right? And it's not just not watching things. It's about just getting the world, which is entertainment, as well as feeding the belly, right? And so, look at all these things and also buying buying things all of it oh my goodness holy spirit is just waking me up every night just get unfolding scripture just telling me this 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 is that this is that is this robin i'm telling you i'm telling you it's about the power of the kingdom of heaven of the keys of the kingdom that you and i've been given and they don't operate in measure in the, in the full potency of it when we have so much of the world in us and we think we have the light of God bright in us, but we haven't humbled ourselves. And so humble yourself, read Isaiah 58. And so the newness of God factor, and this is the analogy I'm going to use. And then I'm going to end and I'm going to pray for you. And you're going to be stirred by the power of Holy Spirit in Jesus name, in Jesus name. And so the newness of God factor. So thank you, Jesus. I am almost through reading John E. Dowling's Neurons and Networks textbook, The Intro into Neuroscience, for his Harvard Intro to Neuroscience class. He wrote it. I'm almost through. 20 pages. Thank you, Jesus. In the meantime of reading that textbook over the last month and a half, about that amount, I've been supplementing with videos and extra articles of the leading of the Lord so that I truly understand the brain and not only understand it, but even the development in the womb. And so I'm going to get into a little bit of the development in the womb when the baby's in the womb of the mother and how the brain develops. Y'all, when we are so fearfully and wonderfully made, it just blows my mind. It just blows my mind. And so I want to get into this one little thing in relation to nerve growth factor that helps the development of the baby's brain. But also, just FYI, and I'll probably be getting into this as well, our neurons create nerve growth factor in the neuron cell body, carries it through the axon, and then it can go out through the synapse if need be. And so, nerve growth factor. And so, nerve growth factor is a signaling molecular signal chemical signal that causes axons as well as other things to grow when the baby's in the womb and all these cells neurons are they start out as glial cells and then they turn into intermediate progenerate progenitory cells which are kind of like uh, similar to stem cells but they're not they can't reproduce themselves in relation to once it's past a certain point. And so then there's all these things that happen when a baby's in the womb and the brain's being formed and all these cells are coming together, creating the neural plate of the brain so that then in time, it can create the actual brain cranium with also the cerebral cortex, all the mechanical in relation to you know, anatomy, when I say mechanical, it's really an anatomical, anatomical stuff that's necessary for the brain to develop, the eyes to see, the ears to hear, nose to smell, taste, all of it, okay? So I want to get into nerve growth factor. 
And so nerve growth factor kind of is the cheerleader, encourager. Uh, and I'll just take an axon. When an axon is being created in the womb of the baby, the embryo, when the axon is being created in the brain, nerve growth factor comes into play. And so nerve growth factor is created by neurons and it is kind of like encourager, cheerleader that causes the sophistication maturing of the axon to develop as well as for synapses, neurons in the brain to synapse and form connections. So nerve growth factors involved. So look, for example, when a baby's walk, when a toddler's walking, nerve growth factor is used to create those synaptic connections so that the baby can walk. And so the same thing happens as a baby's being developed in the womb. So nerve growth factor, but this is what I really found beyond phenomenal, okay? And so they do a time lapse of nerve growth factor that's just near an axon, near it. It's not right up to it, but it's near it. It has closeness, proximity. And that axon, within an hour, you can see the time lapse of 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, 60 minutes. And that axon just shoots up like a bud shooting up through the ground, growing. And it is just mind-blowing that all it needed was this nearness of this signal, encourager. And I think about Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit encourages us. He's our counselor. He's our helper. And that the nearness of this nerve growth factor signal to this axon causes this axon to just mature and develop. And I think about saints, you know, God keeps telling me, y'all are going to love this. God keeps telling me, oh my goodness. He said, Robin, he said, all of y'all are children. Everybody on earth is children. Y'all are all children. It's just that some children have been on earth longer. But some of the children that are, let's say, 18 and older, think of themselves as adults. That's how we classify it here on earth. You and I, you know, we have our man classification of who we are. And so we classify if you're at a certain age, let's say 18, you're an adult. And this is what the Lord was telling me. He said, no, Robin, y'all are all children. You're still all children. You're just, some children have been on earth a hundred years. Some children have been on earth 20 years, some 10 years, some three years, some 50 years. You're still children. And I want you to remember that. And I said, okay, God, tell me more. He said, Robin, people, as they get older, they get distracted with adult things and maturing, but it's the gravitation of the world that's developing them and encouraging them. And they're not keeping that childlike faith to enter my kingdom, he said. And so this nerve growth factor, we're going to look at it. Is the world encouraging you to develop or is the newness of God that he is awesome? He is amazing. He is beyond anything we can think or imagine. He has a power that can do the unbelievable, the impossible. That is our God. And I'm going to compare that to the nerve growth factor, which is the acronym NGF or the uh, uh, initials NGF. NGF is the initials for nerve growth factor. And I'm going to use NGF as an acronym for the newness of God factor. When you keep the newness of God, of how awesome he is, and every single day is a God day, every single day, everything's new, then guess what? This transition, you're not going to be like a deer in the headlights, and you're not going to be like on a roller coaster with your face just going back like this, because God is bigger. He's making the crooked places straight. He's going before you. His glory is your rear guard. It's the newness of God factor. That's what today is about.
as I get ready to end this video. I know this might just not make sense to you, but watch it again and keep watching it until something clicks inside of you. Because saints, I'm telling you that we are ha having to humble ourselves. The light switch comes on. The life of Christ comes on as we go lower, as we humble ourselves. And we figure that nothing is about getting. Everything is about God's creation of mankind, which means what? Souls. He made mankind, not you, not me. We can make an outfit. We can make uh, plans. We can build a building. But guess what? Nothing on this earth to God is more important than a human being. He created mankind. And every time a person is born into this world, it is a creation of God himself. And saints, we've lost the fact in the church that the most important thing to God is a soul, is a person. And we've been distracted and we've not entered in a true fast and it's just been mechanical. It hasn't been rich. It hasn't been powerful. Y'all, what I have seen in this fast, I'm telling you, I'm t I can't even put it into words. It's just beyond what I can speak because it's so rich and so deep what the Father has done. But someone here is watching this and swift change is coming or it's already come and it didn't come the way that you expected and you feel like you're in shock because so much has happened in a way that being held together by God. You're not losing it. You're not falling apart when you should be on the floor or the road weeping and sobbing. There's the newness of God that's pulling you up. You're developing as a child of God. And you're having that pureness of heart to have faith, to know that nothing is impossible with our... Nothing, sorry, it tried to reconnect. Nothing is impossible with our God. So I'm going to pray right here. And I just pray this blesses you. God, I just pray over each and every person watching this broadcast or listening. And I just pray, God, that you bring a new anointing, a fresh anointing on them, Father. And bring them to the place of your sufficiency and their insufficiency. Let them know, Father, just bring to light anything of this present age that is distracting them, that has grabbed a hold of their heart of the world, and has caused them to be gravitating and developing in the way of the world. Father, wake your people up. Cause them to have ears to hear and eyes to see. You, God. And as they grow and develop their faith, the faith of you, growing strong in spirit, knowing your love, God, they will be encouraged and walk in the power of the keys of the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you. Have an amazing afternoon.